you've done it, you've probably, for finding these areas here, again, it's something you should already know. Uh, it doesn't matter to me whether you use numerical integration on the calculator or whether you do it analytically, algebraically. As long as you can express the integral that it is what you're talking about here. If you, uh, if you have a curve for this, y equals x squared, let's just say it looks something like that. And if you want the area from x equals 1 to x equals 5, the area under each curve, so if this is 1 right here, you want from there, and well, the scale's no good, but this is good enough here, to 5. So you want all of that area in there? If you want that area, how do you find how what how do you find that area? Integrate integral from one to five of x squared dx, right? You can you can evaluate that numerically with the calculator or analytically, right, or algebraically or whatever. Leave myself a whole lot of room here, didn't I? If you're uh, doing it on, if you're doing it algebraically, you need to use an antiderivative of this and evaluate it from one to from one to five, right? An antiderivative of that the simplest antiderivative is one third x cubed. Evaluate it from five to one. Uh, I don't evaluate it for five, evaluate it for one. You don't have to write down all the steps here, but one third five cubed minus one third one cubed. Incidentally, you can multiply it by a third afterwards, right? You, you don't have to multiply them each by a third first. Uh, whatever that is, 125 over three minus one over three. Is this 124 over three? So then when we do it on the calculator, that should uh, match up to what we get, not that. Well, we could do it on there too, actually. Um, if you're, if you, whichever way you're doing it, uh, whichever operating system you're, I know, <laughs> I just like to hear you say that every time I do it. Uh, one, five. X squared dx. So that's the same thing, is it not? Oh, we can change it to a fraction. Well, let's let's get the other calculator out too. And, oh, and how he uh, on here? There's 124, 124 over 3. Um, on here, of course, it looks different, but it's exactly the same um, function. You just have to put in the same things here, uh, I suppose in a slightly different order, because you have to put the function in, and then what the variable is, and then the limits. And it should give you the same thing. And you can turn it into a fraction the same way, but it just displays it horizontally. Right? So we uh, we know that already, in theory. This one I'm sure you can do. I'm not going to do that one right now because it's the same kind of idea there. For this unit, I don't care how you... Uh, um, how you actually come up with the uh, the solution. If you if you're thinking in terms of a test or AP exam or whatever, on the AP exam they uh, it doesn't matter to me whether you uh, how you evaluate it for this unit um, as long as you can set up the integral right. Like on a on the AP exam, if you you need to express this and then you can just put the answer. They, they say it's fine to use a calculator to evaluate an integral if it's obviously the calculator part of the test. You don't have to do it analytically. So don't think you always have to do this. It's good if you check. You know, if you're doing it one way, check the other way. You can evaluate it numerically that way. All right. Um, the new thing here is looking at areas between curves. Not that it's a difficult uh, concept here, but 
if we uh, if we graph each of those things, I think you could probably figure out how you're gonna how you're gonna do this without a lot of uh, direction required here. Two minus x squared is an upside down parabola through two here. Y equals negative x is a line that goes um, down like this. If I, I almost let's try again. Let's try again. Well, I, I didn't like that I drew it in a whole bunch of pieces. Well, that's a terrible line. I was just trying to draw it without seeing it. Okay. Oh, you know what I should do? What I should do? That was pretty cool. Okay. If you're graphing this, I mean, because it might help to have it somewhat accurate here. Um, it's going to pass through. Well, let's draw the other line first, actually, because now that when I do this, it... Now when I do this, it actually snaps to the grid. It'll just make it easier, I think. There's that line. And here's the the parabola is going to pass through that point, And it's going to intersect right there. This should not be pointed on top, but somehow it is pointed on top of my lousy drawing skills. OK. Uh, because you need to know a couple points there that this this is why this uh, grid is going to help here. It happened that I know the shape of a parabola and it goes one one two four. So I drew it this way, but you could equally do you know on a calculator and then find those points another way. This point is obviously at negative one. This point is obviously at two. If I want to find the area in between these two things, because that's what it says, doesn't it? Find the area in between those two. We've already done uh, finding area by subtraction of things. Um, the area in between here, this is what you want, right? You want the yellow? Maybe. Uh... <laughs> that's that's the area you want, right? How are you going to find that area? It it is going to be one minus the other because. Remember that when we were finding the integral of something of just the parabola, right? If we do the area underneath there, really, um, when we do integral of, if this is called, did I actually call them f of x and g of x? Or no. Right there? no, okay. So if this is f of x and this is g of x here, the integral of f of x dx from negative 1 to 2 is the heights of all of these, the heights of all of these things here, all these reg... It's drawing little rectangles like this, right? Do you remember when we set up what the integral was? It's finding the area of all of these rectangles and then making them really skinny, right? Well, no, I mean, I'm just saying without this line, right? If that wasn't there and you were just doing the area underneath the other curve, right? Let's split into two halves. Look at the left half here, right? If the area between the two curves is like those green rectangles minus these rectangles for the other one, right? These rectangles like this. The area between them, the area, the blue area is going to be the leftover if you subtract the rectangles underneath the line from the rectangles underneath the curve, right? Does that make sense? Even when it's negative, it still works. Okay, and it's important to realize that. Even when it's negative, if you subtract, it's going to work, right? Because if you have, um, if you just look at the, the parabola, uh, even when you're on this side here, well, when you're on this side um, and you do that rectangle, and the rectangle for the line is actually going to be negative, but if you're subtracting them and the area is negative, what happens? You're actually adding it, right? So you want that. You want them to add together there. Right, because it, it, you aren't subtract. Up here, you're subtracting it, right? You're saying for this side, you're saying it's this area minus this uh, underneath area here to get the leftover. On the other side, you actually want to add them. It doesn't. You want the two areas to add together, but since this area is negative, if we subtract all the way across, it's going to work out because where the area is negative, it'll actually be adding to the area. Does that make sense? Yeah. And even when they're both negative, right? Because when they're both negative over here, like this is a negative area underneath this, and this is a negative area over here, it's still going to work out that the the part of the area that's that you actually want 
ends up being positive, right? Because you take a negative number minus a bigger negative number and you end up with this positive number. You can subtract the two. Basically, you're doing is you're saying, I'm doing heights of rectangles like this. You're just doing the heights of the rectangles between the two curves and summing those up. You're subtracting the two functions. Okay, all the way across here. And the rectangles are like that. All right, we're going to have to pause this here. My rectangles don't look that great. 